We were uh, cutting barn rafters for a lean-to on our property down yonder, and uh, we had some leftover. This is a uh, tulip poplar. It's uh, pretty easy to find. It grows really straight, and it's very common. So, and it was easy to work too, and that's that was the main thing. Uh, what we're going to do today is uh, make a quiver out of the bark and you know basically you just want to find a um, small tree or maybe even a straight branch usually probably just a, a sapling type you know maybe three and a half to four inches in diameter um, big enough for right now right now it's August and the, it's been kind of wet so it was easy to slip off when we did the rafters uh, kind of varies though from tree to tree you just you know I don't know if there's a special rule or not but uh, anyway we got lucky today so um, so here it is it's kind of doesn't even feel like it has bark it's more like a, a skin it feels like but it, it is thick and um, they used it for all kinds of containers um, baskets um, the quivers all types of things like that because it's it is easy to use and easy to find um, pretty useful so uh, I'm just going to take a knife. You got to score it the length of what you want, and it's basically just applying a lot of pressure and going around. And you just continue on around. If you hear that whining, it's it's a little puppy that we have a, a new litter. We had nine puppies, or mountain cur cross with vice. Uh, doesn't happen every day, but they followed us up here. It's it's a pretty good hike. We were really surprised to see them, but here they are. So, all right. As Jennifer was explaining, this is a piece of poplar, and we we're going to use it to make a eastern woodland quiver out of. She's already scored it, so what I'm going to do is take this uh, belt axe that I made, and I'm going to score it lengthwise all the way to where she scored it around, and that'll give us a piece that we can peel off to give us our cylinder or our quiver. So I'm going to take one of these dogwood mallets that she made. You want to keep a straight line and just... Okay, that's the line all the way down. If there's any spots you can kind of cut in between. And the next thing you want to do is start working right underneath. Open up. You may have to take the spot there. You can kind of hear it crunch when you get down through the all the bark layers and then you just start pulling it off run around We've got lots of helpers Alrighty, so here we have the bark that, that he slipped off. It's pretty awesome, isn't it? 
and it you know naturally it wants to curl and you can flatten it out but for our purposes what we're going to do you just leave it up and let it curl by itself you want to put it in a cool dry place for a couple weeks so it can harden and it'll just you know get super hard and that's, that's pretty much all there is to it for, for this part all right as jennifer was showing you the piece of bark that is a cylinder that we pulled off what you can do is take it and flatten it out and then put a rock or something to weight and let it set in the sun it'll dry into this nice flat piece and this is on a much larger scale what they would have used on long houses and, and that type of thing but the reason we did this this is how you're going to get the bottom of your quiver lay it down and all i've got is a piece of charcoal out of the fire you just put your cylinder on it put it up towards the edge so you don't waste as much and that gives you your circle roughly and then you can just take your knife remember kids never cut towards yourself if you like any of the tools or anything you see uh, get a hold of us on Facebook at Ramshackle Farms with Keith and Jen and uh, just give us a private message because we make about everything you see us use okay that may require a little bit of trimming. What you do next is you would drill a hole, drill a hole, and then you could just sew that cap on using sinew or even the inner bark of a poplar tree once it dries. You take that and do a cordage twist on it. Uh, and use it to sew your cap on. That way your arrows won't fall out. And then you can line it with dry grass or some piece of animal fur or something to keep it from rattling as you're stalking around in the woods. Okay, so here's a piece that is dried we've had for a while. Hard as wood, literally. And all I've done is drill a hole in the top of it, do a cordage twist, and pull my loop back through. And I will continue the cordage twist There's a hundred videos on YouTube of how to twist cordage and we'll eventually do one, I'm sure, when we get some uh, nettles ready. But just keep doing the clockwise, counterclockwise twist. And what we'll do, bring it around, tie it in, and you'll be able to swing your quiver. Alrighty, so we have the quiver here. Just sling it around like this, get the arrow out. Got a small game arrow. Just sling it back while you're shooting. So we've got a napped tip right here attached to the shaft with just a pitch glue and uh, the cane shaft. And we got a turkey flu flu there at the end. Okay, we got a hickory cell foe right here with a bark tan deer hide handle and our little small game point. You can find us on Facebook, Ramshackle Homestead with Keith and Jen.